Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Stormwork Sea Trials. Um, I'm going to do a little treat for myself today. Um, it's been Father's Day in Germany and instead of doing my continuing my series of reviews for the spider um, rescue vessels, I'm going to review basically my, my favourite vessel so far in Stormworks. Um, so this vessel is called the MSV Post. Um, as you can see there in the workshop, I'll post a link to it. It's made by Vitus. Uh, don't know anything about Vitus, I'm afraid, but um, this vessel is based on uh, this rather classy... Uh, it's a boy tender owned by Trinity House in the UK, so they basically do all the navigation uh, infrastructure, as far as I know. And you can see there, it's a nice old vessel. Beautiful shapes, a bit of a, a utility deck up the front, a crane, helicopter deck up the back, quite a big superstructure, plenty of accommodation. Um, good old fashioned engine room, seems to be two main engines here and a Jenny in the middle. A uh, big crane and yeah, it's an all round uh, appealing ship. And the crater here has done something really cool. It's basically, um, it's, it's, designed to be a bit of work to operate there. So there's no centralized controls. You have to walk around the ship to get things going. And it's it's very much for me as a naval architect felt like um, a little bit like operating a real vessel. So on a bigger, older vessel, so not the sort of latest vessels where, you know, not the latest offshore support vessels that are kind of highly automated. Uh, to start the engine, you basically had to hand crank a small generator, which would sometimes be used to start then a, a diesel generator, a bigger one, which in turn would be used to compress air, which would be pumped into the cylinders of the big two stroke engine or some of the big four stroke engines to start it. And I found that startup procedure really charming, really cool uh, so from a technical point of view. And this ship has that same startup procedure. So as you can hear, I'm in Stormworks. I've got a, the game sound turned down a bit. I'm going to bring in this vessel. Uh, so my workshop MSV. There we go. And it's 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 one of the most heavy vessels um, in the game, as far as I know. It's just got a lot of physics going on, and it it, it turns into lag for everybody. Uh, but the new optimization update does allow you to bring it in with low physics and get going and get into your multiplayer. So I've played this successfully in multiplayer, quite a few missions. Um, I'll just give you a quick scan through of it. Um, let's go uh, from the bottom up. Um, so if anybody knows any way to get more lighting into these um, section views, I'd, I'd love that. And I well, actually found a cool, uh, not so cool because it's underwater. Um, so basically, you've got a big cargo space up the front here. Um, crew accommodation, three cabins, uh, a firmary, um, some utility space, quite a large public toilets there. And then this great engine room. So he's used, he or she's used six vertical aircraft engines to represent the two big diesels you'd find in here. And then up the back here, you can just about see it. Um, that's air compressor and tank and uh, that's your generator set there and, and this is basically how you get your engine going. I'm going to go a little bit up so engine rooms there all the way through then the next step up you've got basically crew crew canteen in here so let's just step that down a couple of grids crew canteen more toilets, galley, I believe. Um, more kind of officers' cabins, as far as I remember. Um, I forgot to show you this. I'll go back down again. You've got a steering gear room actually here behind the engine room. So this is steering gear room. Uh, storage for cranes and things like that up the back here. It's it's a complex vessel. And, and seems to be kind of very much representing what the real life thing's like, then your bridge up the top. Uh, let's just do a side cut through, engine rooms, some more technical rooms at the back, crew accommodation, bridge, cargo space, as far as I remember. 
and some forward utility spaces here for cargo and steering gear down there, I believe, as well. So it's a really cool layout. So I'm going to spawn it in. This always takes a bit of a time. So we get all sorts of warnings and I, I go a bit laggy. But I believe this works quite nicely to go in here, at least to medium physics. And yeah, helicopter deck on the back here where you can put that um, Gatti, I think it's called. And let's just jump on and get this started. So I remember pretty much the startup procedure, or I think I do. Um, my headphones are just about to run out. So like a true professional that I am, I'm going to just change them in the middle of my video recording. Uh, you can still hear me because my mic is in a separate thing. Um, so um, all dark in here just now, but we basically want to go into the engine room. So the way I'll do it is I'll go in the central door here, get some lights on. So this is done before some of the new doors. Um, or you actually, and you have these nice big light switches there. So you have these kind of key doors, I think before the, the, the modular door, which we've got nowadays. And we're going downstairs. So it's got companion ways and stairs on one side here. And we can do lights again here. Um, so let me just remember sick bay. Uh, I think that's a head as well. And we've got our engine room here and a door for firefighting equipment. So it actually tells you the startup procedure here um, on this little workbench. So turn on the fuel, the fuel pumps, uh, go to the aft section and turn on the generator. Ensure that its fuel valve is open. Turn on the compressor, wait for 14, 15 PSI, open the starter valves of one engine, then leave it open until the engine starts up. Turn on the coolant pumps, Turn off the compression generator and then there's hydraulics in the back. So it's it's real ship operation stuff here. So let's see if I can remember this. Uh, it said something about fuel, fuel valve. So there should be a light in here again. Let's do this properly. Uh, again, older, big clunky light switches, but I love that. Um, so we jump down here and we go down the middle here and turn on the fuel valves as far as I remember. So it might be at the very back here. So it's basically just this one, and this one. All of these are as they should be. Build pumps don't need to be on. And what I usually do is turn on these coolant valves actually straight away, but we'll wait. These are all on, coolant valves are all on. And this. Okay, pumps will turn afterwards. So this is the diesel generator. It's obviously got enough battery in it uh, to turn it on. And it's modeled there, nice little medium engine. Uh, so I don't need to grab that. Now this is the tricky bit. So you have to crouch down and you turn on the fuel down there. That uh, took me quite a while to find it. See if I can close this again. Uh, we don't need to do any of these switches. And this is just a, a more automated Jenny start button. So it's got a governor. So that's running. And it makes quite a lot of noise. We've then got a compressor here. We turn it on. Wait for the pressure to get up to basically the maximum. It takes a while. And this noise annoys me, an annoying noise. Um, so once this has reached, oh yeah, that's showing, here we go. So this needs to get up to 14. This is main engine. So it just stops once it reaches its uh, working pressure or what the pressure of this tank 
and then let's just do port first. So it lets air through these pipes and then starts these engines, which we can't actually hear, but we go and we should be able to see something, not on these coolant ones. There's some instruments up above on the galley, which we'll have a look at, but we'll just start both engines. So let's close that. This will come up to pressure. 14, 15. Oops. There we go. So you have to kind of trust that it's done its job there. I'm just going to put a bit of pressure in there. And then we jump up here. Ah, sorry. You probably remember coolant pumps on. And in real life, these big, big engines like that, you'd have to let them warm up for a while. So green light, it's running, green light running, green light running. And we'll just do the other side as well. So if you're watching this for the first time, Stormworks, of course, is uh, it's a building game. So this has all been built by Vitus, the, the creator. And the logic has been created here. So, you know, it might not be simulating air going through these pipes, but for the user, you are basically simulating that startup procedure with compressed air and the generator down there. I'm going to keep the generator running. I don't think you have to. So, engine is running. Uh, we don't need to do anything else here. We just check our fuel quality. Full. And these are some uh, balancing valves, which again, we don't need. And we can go up the bridge now and do our sea trials. So this is the MVS, I think it is, multi MVS post based on the UK boy tender. And you've got here some engine repeaters so you can see all your engines are running. You've got a nice little alarm panel. Uh, you've got your oil quality where you hold down the button to test. This is your fuel quality, fuel quantity, excuse me. You've got a chart table, uh, weather information. So I love this. This is a nice little traditional way where you have a, a little navigator station who would be the person looking at the weather. Some of the more modern boats, the one Spider does, you have everything you know, up the front. So it's really made for multiple people. You could have somebody being the navigator there, somebody being the engineer, and then somebody on the helm. And let's see if I can remember how to get her going. So she's got a throttle lever there. Give her a bit of gas. You've got thrusters here. And that's for your compass, I believe, yep. Yeah. Or your sighting compass. And we're just gonna do first gear go to external view and she's moving so I quite like this gear system it's not so realistic um, if you give her full throttle in first gear she'll just move away very slowly but it's nice for slow speed maneuvering she's got three rudders down the back there which do operate on the keys so second gear third gear you do hear the load in the engines um you could probably just about still hear that the generator is on so that's probably something i should have turned off but isn't that a great startup procedure turn on air generator air compressor start the engines uh and yeah in real life you'd probably run this for a while to let it warm up Temperatures modelled on the engines. I don't think wear or anything like that is uh, is modelled. So let's just give her a full speed run. Um, I can pretend to be somewhat realistic. Let's have a look here. So RPMs good. Temperatures all quite low. No lights there. Uh, that's just power for your helicopter deck, um, which we're not going to use just now. We're just going to focus on the sea trails here. 
Let's give her full power. Fourth gear. And that's it. She's got four gears. So we're doing 26 knots, I think. Yep. Yeah. 26 meters of water. So she runs pretty good. 26 knots, nice speed. Uh, a ship this, like this probably would run at 14, 15, 16 knots perhaps maximum. In real life, uh, more like 10 for sort of cruising, I guess. 10 to 12, 12, I don't know. No idea. If anybody knows, but I'm just guessing based on my experience. Um, and she runs pretty nice. She's got a big turning circle, as far as I remember. Just to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, it's gonna be a, a long time. I'd do this more scientifically if it wasn't a game. But you can see there, compared to um, Spider's creations, they, they don't turn, this ship doesn't turn half as quickly, which is fine. This is what a real ship, more close to what a real ship would turn like. So it feels very realistic from that point of view. This is full left rudder. And I'm not, I'm not even gonna do the full turn because it will just take too long for you people with YouTube attention spans. Um, the rudders do stick actually, I just realized. So I'm gonna use this to make sure she's going straight ahead, that'll do. Um, yeah, so max speed about 26. And I'm assuming when I go into weather here, give her a bit of wind that she'll handle it very well. So she rolls more than some of the more modern vessels. So you can see there the wind from my right, my starboard side, nautical terms. And uh, it's actually pushing the whole vessel over a little bit permanently. Uh, let's try bring her into wind. So it's a good test. So I don't need to hands off the rudder here, basically. She does have an autopilot. Let's just put the lights on in here. As far as I remember. Nice ship's horn. Replicating the kind of compressed air system that would be behind a ship's horn these days. So bring her into the south. You see, you get a very nice, realistic ship motion as she bobs across the waves from inside. Straighten her up. So this feels, for me, very good based on the kind of wave motion I'd expect to see of a ship this size. You can see there the waves nearly coming across this, the lower part of her freeboard, just where the, the rib is. Really nice. Okay, let's try full wind. So I don't think we'll see any jumping around or anything like that, maybe. Oh yeah, actually we got a bit of engine run as the props came out of the, the water. Yeah, that's great. If you can hear that. Yeah, one big prop and the engines over rev as we come out of the water there. So I'm trying to keep her into wind. It's quite difficult actually. She's fighting me. You see from the smoke there, we're kind of into wind now. She's rolling a lot, but behave, behaving apart from these odd jumps, pretty much like a, a real ship in the waves. Let's bring her beam on. I'm gonna do is bring her back a bit. Go down a gear. Speed down to something a bit more realistically. So let's beam on. And I don't think this vessel has got any kind of automatic stabilization like many of the ships in Stormworks. I think she's just got, she does have fin stabilizers. Uh, no, just bilge keels as far as I can tell. These two wings you can just about see there at the bottom of my screen. And that's what you would have in a vessel like this. Just, and that's to dampen the rolling. 
So basically, it's just you won't roll um, aggressively. So she will roll, but it, it will slow down the speed of that roll so it's not bouncing back and forward. So this is great. You can see there the wind on the side of her there, the windage, as you call it, is pushing her over. And the, the effect of the wind and the waves together, giving her quite a big roll and he, well, heel angle. Look at that. That's quite extreme. Let's see what she looks like from inside. Yeah, not very comfortable. So, but I think that's pretty good. You would have a, 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 a pretty, not as much as this probably. Well, it depends how much wind is 100% in Stormworks, but you would have the vessel being pushed over by the wind like that. So let's bring it to stop. See what happens. This is going to be sort of a new part of my sea trials. Neutral. Check all the systems are still running. We've got our light here showing us just how much we're tipping over. Uh oh. That didn't feel good. <laughs> so that light was at 90 degrees. And again, all right. Let's check, see if we can catch one of these rules from looking out the window. Yeah, so she's doing pretty serious roll beam on. My God, that's that's nearly full over there. Let me just get her back in the in the helm. Watch this from outside. So big waves. So that's just a combination of wind and waves. Quite extreme on this vessel, but really cool. Let's just leave it on 10. Really cool that that's, it's simulated like that. So take the wind away and she pops back up. And settles down. So, wow, what a, what a ride. Um, so that is the MVS, I believe, MVP. Really sorry if I got this wrong. Um, the vessel's called Post, P-O-S-T. It's by Vitus, the creator. It's it's a fantastic thing. Uh, really good if you want to do some missions. Uh, you can launch the rib there. She runs fine. You can land a helicopter in the back. It's kind of everything you want. But big vessel. Um, it was very laggy until, you know, now you, you can turn the physics down. It probably affect the crane. You need to turn the physics back up to use the crane properly because it's got a big kind of cable on it. Um, but a great wee ship, very realistic handling on the water, I, I feel, and a real good example of, of, uh, of a design and of somebody getting all the sort of naval architecture aspects right of how the, how the boat should feel and how it should feel to operate in Stormworks. So hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, look forward to your comments and feedback. And I'll be switching back to review the rest of the spider creations in my other videos. Take care for now and uh, catch you later. Bye.